that journey chick on Instagram. Got my gnomes on today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How are you? I hope you had a great Monday. If you are new to the channel, welcome to Crafting and Crime Daily. This is a daily show where I, my co-host is Stitch um, Pearl, P-U-R-L. She's running around here uh, somewhere else. These are the crafty cats. He is trying to break into the uh, yarn again. I have to find another way to store the yarn. Yeah, just going to have to. Because I have this cabinet and um, I had to, it has these open and closed drawers and I had to Velcro them shut. Well, now we have discovered this one here, Stitch, how to, you know, use his paw to get the Velcro off. Arr. Yeah. Anyway, got my Christmas cup, my Javalia Christmas cup of coffee. Oh, there he goes. Uh-oh, I got to stop him. We had to get the spray bottle out. We're just going to keep that handy, yes. Oh, this cat. <laughs> it, go find something to do. Bored. <laughs> now you could chase his tail. There he goes. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So last night I finally finished Alice Van Gogh. Also, I forgot to tell you, don't forget to hit the like button. I abuse the like button on a regular basis. And today I am making him do the laundry. Yeah. So hit the like button on your or on your way in or out of this video and if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing and don't forget the notification bell because sometimes I do pop-up lives you never know and you don't want to miss a single episode of crafting and crime all right so yeah I finished Alice Van Gogh oh I had to use glue on the eye let me move it my on this eye like there was no glue like it didn't stick at all so i had to use this glue and it was so awkward i had glue on my fingers on the tweezers it, yeah the tray i'd wash the tray wash my hands but it's done it's finished let me show you the whole thing and i i have the next painting underneath of it so here we go here's alice van gogh it's uh it's a uh, posted on Instagram as well if you want to see the whole thing there. There it is. I'm going to order a magnetic frame for it. So the gear of Alice is done. I'm not starting another Alice <laughs> cuz it's uh December 7th. Yeah. There we go. Oh, so beautiful. Now, I will tell you post review serious serious gapping here. If you look at this thing up close yeah, a lot of gapping, but I do understand that uh, Craftably, this was one of their first diamond paintings, like the first editions, and since then they have changed drill companies, so better luck, right? Hopefully, I haven't got another Craftably to try it out, but there it goes, um, only because I just haven't seen anything I like. Um, they're doing a lot of... Um, Big Eye Girl stuff, and uh, this is going to be the, the last one that I do for a while. I'm starting the Year of Landscapes, January 1st, with the Ticket to Ride Destination Paris event. Make sure you check that out. There's a video that will tell you all about it and how to join in. All right. Urgh. I think what I'm going to do, I still want that glue to dry a little bit. Now, this is the next one that I've been working on. On the side, this is from DP with Sparklers. Now, it's rainbow painting with these hands and hearts. So this, everything you see outside of the hands is crystals. The hands itself are just normal acrylic drills. And then the heart in here is Aurora Borealis drills. So it's a mixed media canvas. I love it. So I got the first three rows done, the orange, yellow, and red. So 
still got time to finish lots of color blocking. Lots of color blocking, which I love. But today, what I thought I'd do is kit down these drills. I'm not going to save these drills because, like I said, um, not the best drills in the world. So no reason to save them. Plus, I have no other crop to bleed, so. But first, yes, friend mail, Christmas presents, yay! This one is from Nareda, and it is Nareda's birthday today. So, Nareda, check your email. Yes, something from Mickey Sunshine Creates and myself from our hearts to you. Yes. And happy birthday to you. You craft like a shrew. You crochet for everyone. And we all do love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Nareda. Happy birthday to you. Okay. That's enough of that. What did she get me for Christmas? <gasps> the gnomes. It's color a world of gnomes. A coloring book. Because tomorrow on Craft With Me Wednesday, I'm going to color with one of my colorist friends, Shaleen, from Shaleen's Creativity Room. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Now, some of them, I don't know why it comes with instructions. Oh, it just says, Gnomes everywhere. This is from the author. Let's see. He's showing his workspace. Oh my God, I wish I had that kind of workspace. A view of figurines I've enjoyed creating. He creates gnome figurines. Like, he's got shelves of them. <gasps> what? So here's a couple that he's designed. Here's one of them that's colored. Here's another one. Oh, so cute. So there's these geometric designs around the gnomes. All right, there's a green one. My sister likes green, yellow. Oh, do you see a theme developing here? I do. Oh, they all have little names. Too cute. And they're pink for me, pink. Oh, that's my favorite. And so we can start coloring there. So, so we have all these things to color. I wonder if there's like a Christmas one. I'm sure there is. Here, there's a Christmas one right there. We'll do that one tomorrow. Craft with me Wednesday. Oh, what's on the back? It says something on the back. Oh, small cheer and great welcome makes a merry fest. William Shakespeare. Hmm. So freaking adorable. There's a Hanukkah one. Ah! That's so cute. All right. I have some beautiful coloring pencils. I don't, I'm not, I don't call myself a colorist because I'm not that good. But I, I like to color. I have the pencils. I like to do some shading and stuff like that. But we're going to do this tomorrow. Thank you, Nareda. So, so much appreciated. Jim Shore, he's the one that colored. Or, um, I don't know, what do you say? They... It's his book, an inspirational collection of whimsical characters. Um, the artwork is by Jim Shore. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Not very artfully, but yes, I'm trying to say that. And, oh my God, so excited. I'm not going to open this box because someone is going to win what's in this box. This is from one of our sponsors from the Ticket to Ride event. Yeah, somebody's going to win what's in here. Yes. So I will forward that to the winner uh, in February. <laughs> so don't forget, Ticket to Ride, Destination Paris. I'm so excited about this event. Anyway, journaling time. Bro, let's get out the planner. Planner, planner, planner. I put my bills in here for next month or for, you know, later this month. Oh, that's January. Where's where's today? Where's today? Oh, here it is. We've already done Nareda's birthday. I have an eye doctor appointment today. 
Uh, gotta get some new glasses. I want to get some stylish glasses because I have a lot of money left in my FSA. So why not get some good ones, right? So what do you think? Like the, the big, big ones? <laughs> or pink? I should get pink glasses. Now, I have a pair of pink glasses, uh, my computer glasses that I use at work to do my computer work. Um, I actually see better up close with my computer glasses. These are progressive lenses, you know, bifocals that, you know, there's no line. Um, so what they do with the computer glasses is they just raise the line up, you know, the, the transition up a little higher. So when you're on the computer, you're not constantly going like this to look out of the bottom of your bifocals. So they raise it up a little bit so your head is in a neutral position and your neck is not hurting all the time. But I'm thinking about getting pink glasses for everyday use. I don't know. What do you think? So, okay, let's write down. It is National Cotton Candy Day. Ooh, cotton candy. Who doesn't love fairy floss? <laughs> cotton candy. And this day in history, well, yesterday we did a train robbery. Today we're going to do a train uh, some shootings on a train, train shooting, train shooting. Yup, there we go. The rent is paid. I didn't do any other. I have another unboxing. I filmed it. I just have to put it together, which I'm going to do today. We'll, you know, get all the editing done. And then I'll get that uploaded to you as a dreamer design. But I do actually plan to uh, do a diamond art club today. Film a diamond art club. So that's our planner. I hope you keep a planner. This has really been helpful for me. It has. Like remembering your doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. Oh, which reminds me. I have one Thursday. Did I write that in? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Thursday. I have an appointment at 3 p.m. Dr. Arnold. Okay, that's to get my uh, psych meds, you know. Oh, those are always fun visits. How are you doing? And you, and what are you going to say? What's your normal response to that question? I'm fine. But I may not be fine, but I say I'm fine every single time. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Just give me my prescriptions and let me get out of here. Any thoughts about killing yourself? Nope. They have to ask that. I think that's a requirement. They have to ask that you. Haven't you had any thoughts? No. <laughs> I'm thinking about Christmas. That's what I'm thinking about. Have you had any thoughts about Diamond Art Club purchases? Yep. I don't get mine till later this week. I know. Everything's delayed with the shipping. Can you believe it? Have you had any thoughts about shipping? Lots of thoughts about shipping. Yeah. I've got, I've got to clean this desk off. Oh my God. It is a mess. All right. It's all going to come crashing down here one of these days. Let's do our Advent Gnome. We have 18 days till Christmas. Thank you, Nomi. 18 days. Woohoo. I need to get to shopping. All right. Let's see what we got for today. Can I get it out without the tweezers? Nope. Where's my tweezers? We have a, we're going to see what random act of kindness we can do today. So someone pointed out to me yesterday that if you're going to give something to the post, postal person, you have to check because they have regulations about gifting to them. I did not know that. But I think they happily accept gifts and just don't say anything. I don't know. So what do we got today? Let's take a look. Bring home a favorite treat. Well, I have no problem with that. <laughs> so yesterday, one of the, uh, as you recall, one of the random acts of kindness, sometimes you have to be kind to yourself, bring home your own treats. Well, one of the random acts of kindness earlier in the Advent was make your favorite meal. So last night I made homemade macaroni and cheese. I put several different cheese. I put Colby, Monterey Jack, cheddar, Parmesan, a little dried mustard in there. Oh my God. It was so good. It was so delicious. Yeah. 
So we're eating that again tonight. But yeah, that is my favorite meal. And uh, I made it from scratch. And I used um, bow tie pasta. I love bow tie pasta. Macaroni and cheese. I know, it's kind of weird. But anyway, that's what I like. Thank you, Naomi. We will see you tomorrow. So bring yourself home a treat today. Bye. Yep. All right, let's get our thing out. Let's talk about Cotton Candy Day. National Cotton Candy Day. Now, I found some really cool pictures on the internet. Um, on Google, Google Images, I put in uh, candy, uh, I forget what, what the search term was I used. I didn't use cotton candy, but there's some amazing candy, cotton candy artwork out there. And I will show you some of it. They, they make these beautiful flowers and figurines and wow. And one of, I'll put the pictures here. One is even like one, one is a flower, like huge, huge. And um, then there's these figurines. And then this other picture is of a cotton candy forest. Like you walk into this room and it, everything in it is made out of cotton candy. And it looks like you're in this pink forest. What? Yeah. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I, I got to go there. I don't know where it is, but I got to go there. Cotton candy is just spun sugar. It has one ingredient. That's it. And it's been around since the 1800s. But back then, it was, it was more like... Um, pull sugar it, you know it had a very hard you know how when they have you ever seen them pull sugar it's hard um that was like the precursor to cotton candy um, and then in uh the 1800s these two men came up with the cotton candy machine and they pa patented it patented it and um took it to carnivals and fairs where it quickly you know at 25 cents a, a thing sold seventy thousand at the first place they took it. Really, really popular. Now I'm gonna get this stuff all over me. Can you imagine? Yeah, it was a hit. Let's just say that, a huge hit. I gotta take these out because there's drills inside here that I gotta pour out here when I'm done. So glad to finish that painting. So I just thought it would never end. It's a beautiful painting though. It turned out really pretty. My sister loves cotton candy. So it comes in different flavors and you know, so it's something you could look forward to when you go to a fair or a carnival, you know, there's always cotton candy. Now our local grocery store sells cotton candy. So, and it's super cheap. You get a big bag of it for like a couple bucks. So my sister grabs one. She, she likes to diamond paint and eat cotton candy. I, do, I like cotton candy, but it's a mess. It's just a mess. I was thinking, you know, I could go into that cotton candy forest with a with the spray bottle. <laughs> they would probably, I'd probably get re arrested. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's not funny. But it is kind of funny because it just turns to, you know, liquid. If you put it in liquid, it just dissolves because it's just sugar, sponge sugar. Have you ever made cotton candy yourself? I have not. There's, They have machines that you can buy on Amazon, cotton candy machines. I looked at them. The ones I looked at were sold out. I guess some people are getting cotton candy machines for Christmas. Not in this house. I think it would be fun to, to try and make it, though, don't you think? I do. Let's talk about crafting and crime. Yes. Ghislaine Maxwell, she is in federal court on trial for sex trafficking. She was Jeffrey Epstein's girlfriend. So uh, yesterday, you know, uh, as you met, many of you know, Jeffrey Epstein, he uh, was also charged, but then he committed suicide while he was in his jail cell. Very fishy circumstances there. So Ghislaine Maxwell is now on trial. And her attorney's saying, oh, she's just a scapegoat, you know, because they couldn't try Jeffrey Epstein. So now they're going to try, uh, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell, his girlfriend. But there's been quite a bit of evidence that she played a major role in pr pr 
procuring the girls for him to have sex with. Yes. She would offer them, you know, she'd take them to lunch. She'd, she'd woo them. They would offer them apartments and money. And so this one girl yesterday, she went on the stand under the pseudonym of Kate. She uh, is not one of, she was not considered one of his minor victims. Um, because at the time she was 17. And uh, she testified that she was lured into him. You know, he flew her all over the, you know, Ghislaine, she would call, Ghislaine would call her and say, oh, you know, Jeffrey's uh, needs a massage. Can you come over and help out? And she would go over there and she would get sexually assaulted when she would walk into the room. Now, why she went back after the first time, I have no idea. She says she was afraid that if she stopped going over there, um, then she'd have to admit what was going on. Hmm. I have to think about that. But she was on the cross-examination. The defense brought out that she was part of these, that they had this big victims fund uh, where all the victims got millions of dollars. She got like $3 million as part of this victims fund. Yeah. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but the defense brought that out. So she actually participated, this girl, Kate, from the time she was 17 until her mid-30s. This kept going on because she said she was afraid to stop it. She was told by Ghislaine Maxwell, Maxwell that Jeffrey Epstein needed to have sex three times a day, so she kind of needed help with it. So could you, Shislaine would call her and say, okay, could you come over and help me out? <laughs> can you imagine? Hey, I'm really tired. Can you come over and help my boyfriend? Can you meet his needs? Because I'm just, I've had enough. I got things to do. I don't know. That's a strange one. Strange one. And then she said there was this one time she came over and Ghislaine had set out a schoolgirl out and said, you know, Jeffrey loves this. Why don't you go put it on and go serve him some tea? So at the time, Epstein was with his personal trainer working out. So she puts his outfit on and she goes down to the gym where he's at. The personal trainer leaves, you know, wisely, and she gets assaulted by Epstein. Well, let's see, there was a sexual encounter. I don't, I'm not hearing the testimony, so I don't know what actually happened. You know, they, I'm sure they're saying, but this, you know, none of the reporters are going into any detail about the specifics of what he was doing to these women. Um, I wish federal court had cameras, I really do. Anyway, so I don't know how long this trial's gonna last, but a while. They're gonna parade all of his victims um, and and outline, each victim is gonna outline how Maxwell assisted, yes. And and this one from yesterday, Kate, she said, she, the first time she went in there with Ma with um, Epstein in the massage room, Maxwell was there the whole time, yep. Yep. Okay, now let's talk about the trial of Josh Duggar. Um, he is uh, was a rea reality TV star on 19 Kids of Kelting, which was, I think, a TLC show. It was canceled um, because there were allegations that Josh had sexually assaulted several people, including his sisters, when they were young. He was the oldest child of the family. He was one of 19, number one of the 19. Um, he's married to Anna. They now have seven kids. This is a religion where they believe God will give you as many kids as you're meant to have. No birth control. Well, some of the sisters in this in this family have wised up and are now on birth control. They're like, eh, we ain't having that many kids. Um, but some haven't. That's another story. Anyway, so yesterday the prosecution rested, but not before they put on a family friend of the Duggars. And now this is the woman that was married to um, a counselor and she had come in for a pretrial hearing earlier last week um, to see if she would be able to testify because there was a motion um, 
that was put forth by the defense that whatever was said to her by Josh Duggar was protected by a clergy privilege. So the judge questioned this witness and and ask all these questions. Are you a clergy? Are you this? Are you that? No, 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 no. So he said, okay, you can testify. So Josh had apparently gone to her and confessed that he had assaulted four young girls. Now, what does that have to do with the case? It, nothing. <laughs> but it shows that he, it goes to show that he has the propensity for child pornography. You know, he likes young girls. I don't know about boys. I don't know about that. I don't want to go there. <laughs> so, he, uh, they also put on an expert. No, that was okay. So the prosecution rested. Then Josh Duggar's uh, defense started and they put on a computer expert who said, yes, this computer, it is possible possible that someone could access this computer remotely. So this was to put in a doubt into the mind of the jurors that, oh, maybe, you know, maybe someone else accessed it remotely and it wasn't Josh Tucker. I don't know. Oh, I did forget the prosecution put on one other person. This was a friend of Josh Duggar's, uh, a childhood friend that he grew up with. And he was saying that Josh was very proficient in computers. He he had even approached him at one point about how to work this Linus, um, I don't know what you call it, um, computer programming. And this is in, uh, in anticipation that the defense is going to say, well, Josh was homeschooled and he doesn't know anything about computers. And, but this witness says, yes, he was quite proficient in the use of computers. So, um, and that was something that the prosecution wanted the jury to hear. Now, I thought the prosecution was going to put on some of his siblings, but that apparently did not happen. Um, his sister, one of the sisters that he apparently or allegedly abused when she was a child was actually in the courtroom yesterday. So, uh, the defense will continue their case today and that should be very interesting. This is actually in three different boxes. Now, as you know, we are going, I am going to be covering the trial of Dante Wright. Um, he was the victim of a police shooting. The officer, Kimberly Potter, um, they made a traffic stop because they had a broken taillight. Once they had him pulled over, they discovered that he had outstanding warrants and he had an air freshener hanging from his car, which apparently that's illegal too. So they were trying to get him out of the vehicle. He would not exit his vehicle. So they were trying to get him out of the vehicle. And this Kimberly Potter goes to, pulls a gun on him thinking it's her taser. She shoots him and kills him. So we're going to hear all about that. They are done picking the jury, um, so opening statements are scheduled for to begin tomorrow. So that is the next trial that's in state court that I will be able to actually see the testimony and describe the witness's demeanor, things like things that make it more interesting than in federal court where you just see chalk drawings, really bad drawings of people drinking water bottles and, you know, weird stuff. Now let's talk about this day in history. What happened this day in history? In 1993, there was a Long Island Railroad shooting. As the train arrived at Marillion Station, this passenger, Colin Ferguson, just stands up and goes down the aisle and starts shooting people. He killed six people and injured 19 others. Pearl, get down. Come here. Come here. Come see mommy. Come here, Pearl. What was that? Oh, my mouse. Come here. Come here. Say, so what's going on, mommy? Let's put the trash in here, too. 
This is where I keep my trash in this little container here. Come here, Pearl. Don't you want to see what mommy's doing? Hmm? You're going to back up. That's, oh, you're just going to sit there? Okay. I'm going to put what the cats, uh, this is Stitch from this morning. You can take, a, if, it, if this day in history is kind of boring for you. Uh, no, get down. Oh my God. She's trying to get my camera. <laughs> These cats, I swear. Ooh, yarn. Stitch was playing his game this morning. This is called Mouse for Cats. It's on the iPad. This is my older iPad, so I let him play on that one. Okay, she's getting down. Nope, she's coming back. Nope, she's getting down. <laughs> she, she's like, it's a long jump, Mom. There we go. Now she's down. Okay. This day, this day, back to this day in history. So this Colin Ferguson guy was nutty as a fruitcake. I'm telling you. He... <laughs> He's charged with all these murders. The trial comes up. Well, as they're approaching trial, he has one set of uh, one guy that volunteers to be his lawyer for nothing. I'll be his lawyer, and they have him evaluate Colin Ferguson. They have him evaluated to see if he's competent to stand trial. And the psychiatrist comes back and says, "Yeah, he's competent, based on some things that he said." But listen, this guy is really, really crazy. So then um, the guy that volunteered, uh, he filed all these motions, you know, that he was going to declare an insanity defense. And this Colin Ferguson was not having it. I'm not insane. I don't want this defense. So he fires him. <laughs> then he gets another set of attorneys and they want to do the same thing. And they're going to, they said, we're going to say that you're insane against your will. We're just going to, we're just, it's just going to be a defense. Go with it. They also were using this the black rage defense. He had been driven insane by racial prejudice, which would cause him to do these random violent acts. That's a defense. They're saying it's a similar defense to like battered women syndrome. I don't know. But he wasn't having it. He's like, nope, I'm going to represent myself. So they, they let him represent himself. They actually had him evaluated again to see if he was competent to stand trial. And the guy said, yeah, he's competent. Um, he, based on statements he made about um, this guy, Pataki, who was running for governor at the time, who said he was going to bring back the death penalty. And the fact that he understood all that, this psychiatrist says, yeah, he understands what's going on. So he represented himself and he would talk about himself in the third person. And he would say, um, he, he, his, he, he kept changing his defense strategy. His first strategy was to say that he was sleeping on this train and a white guy stole his gun and shot all these people. And then they pinned it on him. Then his next defense was, that these people were actually shooting at him. So when he would question them, he would say, do you recognize who you tried to shoot? And they would say, no, you tried, you shot at me. And when they would point to him, he would duck. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Another one of his defenses was that someone implanted a chip into his brain that caused him to do this, that he was standing there and they ran up to him and put this thing in the back of his head, this computer chip that caused him to go insane. What caused him to commit these murders? So fast forward, he's convicted of everything that he was charged with and he was sentenced to 315 years in jail to life. So the judge assured everyone, this man will never leave prison. Uh, the judge was Donald Belfi, and he said, no, he will never see the light of day again. So he filed his own appeals from jail, saying he had ineffective assistance of counsel himself. He said he was ineffective. His, he filed it against himself, or he lost that appeal. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I was ineffective representing myself. Well, no, oh, I, I, let me, I won't say that on camera. No shite, Sherlock. How about that? <laughs> anyway, and he kept getting beat up in prison. Yeah, 
I don't know if he's still getting beat up in prison, but during the trial and stuff, he was getting beat up and lit he really was. There were four people in prison that were charged with beating him up. And a lot of this trial was actually te televised. However, this, were, this trial was going on the same time as the O.J. Simpson trial. So you know what everybody was watching, the O.J. Simpson trial, not Colin Ferguson's trial. And it's funny, when you look up Colin Ferguson, you get the TV, the TV actor, Colin Ferguson, the, the, the guy that has the show, Colin Ferguson. Yeah. So you have to scroll down to see anything about Colin Ferguson, the murderer. I couldn't find a picture of him, though. So that is the show for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Um, he's doing my laundry. Yeah. Have a great Tuesday, and don't forget to sign up for the Ticket to Ride, and I will see you tomorrow, Wednesday, for another episode of Crafting in Crime. Take care, everybody. I love you. Bye.